Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintBallProps.com. Uh, today we're going to make do an assembly video. It is the Intruder Alert module, and uh, the Intruder Alert module you have three different choices. You can choose the passive infrared uh, motion detector, infrared slot sensor version, or light sensor version, <coughs> which actually can be used as a laser trip wire. So you can you will get all of this when you buy your kit and either this, this, or this, depending on which version you buy, because the microcontroller requires slightly different uh, programming. Anyhow, how you interface these three units to your board will do right at the very end. First things first, let's talk about what comes with the kit. Again, one of these three sensors, depending on uh, which configuration you buy, two dip sockets, uh, two dip ICs, a uh, 0.5 watt speaker with two pin connector, uh, three female to female connectors, a 9 volt battery connector, a 78 lo 550 regulator, uh, a 3 pin header, a 2 pin header, two 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a 160k ohm resistor, a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So first things first, let's populate our resistor and our four capacitors. The two ceramic capacitors are both labeled 104 on the, on the back side of the capacitor. They are not polarized. As long as you put them in the right slots, it doesn't matter which orientation you place them. The first one goes into C1, the C1 slot. Now the C1 footprint is labeled 0.1U for 0.1 micro and C1, so 0.1U C1. Place one of your two ceramic capacitors in that slot and solder it in place. Your second uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor goes in the C4 slot, labeled right here, labeled C4 0.1U. Once you've soldered those into place, let's look at our capacitors. We've got two electrolytic capacitors. One is 10 microfarad, one is 1 microfarad. They are labeled 10 UF and 1 UF, respectively. And you'll notice that they want the, each of them have a longer lead and a shorter lead. Your long lead is your positive lead, your short lead is your negative lead. Now the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes right here in the C2 slot, labeled 10U for 10 micro C2. Now on the, you have to look very closely, you won't be able to see it from this perspective, but on the right pin from this view, the right pin has a little plus sign right below it. That's where we want to place our long pin or our positive pin, and we'll place our short pin in the left hole. Make sure you don't reverse that as soon as you power it up. Your cap might pop, and while it might not completely wreck the functionality of the circuit, it won't be optimal, and obviously we don't want an ugly popped capacitor on our board. Now, more importantly, the one microfarad electrolytic capacitor in the C3 slot, labeled 1U C3, there is a plus sign on the right lead, which means we want to place our long lead in the right hole and a short lead in the left hole. Again, if you, if, in this case, if you actually reverse polarity, the capacitor likely won't pop, but your uh, your intruder alert warning will not work. It's a very important capacitor. Lastly, our 160 ohm uh, resistor goes in the OSC slot right here. Label it's uh, just a little resistor slot labeled OSC for oscillation. That cr that is our sampling resistor. So place that in, uh, solder it into place nicely, and make sure there are no shorts. And next we will do our 78L05 and our two pin header connectors. The pin headers are easy. Uh, the two pin header goes in the SPK slot for speaker. We're going to plug our speaker in there later. <coughs> our three pin header connector goes in these three holes right there. Uh, make sure that when you're soldering those into place that there's no shorts, especially on the uh, speaker. Um, now, the 78L05 has three pins. It's also got a flat side with writing on it and a curved side. The curved side is the back side. Uh, you'll notice that the 78L05 slot right here has a flat side on the front and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, match the front flat side of the 78L05 to the bottom of the board where there is a flat area of the footprint and that the curved side faces the 10 microfarad capacitor, the curved side of the footprint. You can't really reverse this. If you reverse it, your circuit simply won't work. Um, but you'd have to be you'd, you'd have to be pretty careless to to reverse that. Just pay attention to when you're placing that in. Okay, so let's talk about also the uh, the uh, dip sockets. We've got a four pin dip socket and an. Uh, 16-pin <laughs> dimp socket. Now, on the footprint, there's a notch on the left-hand side for both 
of the chips. On the left hand side of both of the dip sockets, there is a notch. And on both sides of the chips that we'll be putting into the dip sockets, they have those notches too. So you want to make sure that from a bird's eye view, all of the notches face left. So once we solder in our, uh, our, our, our sockets, we can place our chips in, but make sure that the notches on the chips are facing left from this perspective to match up with the notch on the footprint, on the socket. You get my drift. If you turn the chips around, consider them fried if you power up the board. So be very, very, very careful. Let's order those into place. Make sure that there's no shorts on either of the, um, the dip sockets. If you have any shorts, depending on what the short is, it could severely damage the chips. So no shorts, double check that. And uh, from there, what we'll do is we'll solder in our 9-volt uh, connector and place our speaker, and then we'll talk about the sensors. Easy step. The 9-volt connector for your 9-volt battery, uh, there's a red wire and a black wire. Uh, on the left side of the board, there's two pads labeled V plus and GND for ground. Black should be soldered to ground or GND, and red should be soldered to V plus. V plus is your positive supply voltage. Now, if you want, you can even add, once you've soldered it, you can even take some hot glue if you'd like and uh, put it over top just to solidify it. Uh, it's up to you. It's not necessary, but it's nice to have. Uh, there are four mounting holes, so you can mount this to something if you'd like. There is that option. Now, as for the speaker, the speaker is more or less just a coil, a coil of wire, 8 ohm coil of wire. So it does, there's no polarity. While there are red and black um, wires, it doesn't matter which way you place it. Just pop the connector onto our 2-pin header, and there you go. Okay, so now we need to talk about the sensors. I'll talk about each one separately. The kit comes with uh, three female to female connectors. Uh, the colors <coughs> may vary. Uh, but what you need to do is consider the three pin header connector right here. On the left, from this perspective, there's a pin called 5 volts. Um, the middle pin is called SIG for signal. And the rightmost pin is labeled GND for ground. Now, one of, now, all of these things have something in common. They've all got a VCC pin, a ground pin, and an out pin. Now, uh, VCC is 5 volts. VCC is a common uh, term used for a positive power supply, like the power supply for the external sensor boards. Now, you can actually pop off the Fresnel cap on the motion sensor board. Uh, the Fresnel cap, what it acts to do is it filters out ambient light, so it only picks up on the infrared spectrum coming off the human body. And on the pin side, right here, the pins are right underneath on the other side of the board, but it's labeled right here. Uh, GND on this pin, ground, middle pin is called out, and the left pin is called VCC, from this perspective. So VCC, take one wire and connect that pin to the 5 volt pin on the, uh, on the main board. Take the out pin and connect that to the SIG pin. Take the GND pin and connect it to the GND pin on the main board. That is how you connect it. Then you can put your Fresnel cap back on, it fits right back into place, and you're ready to go. You plug in your 9 volt battery. As for the slot sensor, uh, the left pin is labeled out, middle pin is GND for ground, right pin is VCC. Connect VCC to 5 volts, GND to GND, and out, sorry, out to SIG. In the case of the light sensor, there are actually four pins. Uh, I might change the actual uh, dis uh, the m actual module that I use in the future, but there is a uh, VCC pin, connect that to the 5 volt line, uh, GND for ground, connect that to the ground pin, and D0. There's D0 and A0. Ignore A0, connect D0 to the SIG pin. Now let's power it up and give it a test. I'm going to plug in the 9 volt battery. There might be a false trigger right off the bat. PIR sensors are commonly uh, pretty bad for the time, the time it takes to stabilize. So I'm going to plug it in and leave the room. Light or dark, it will pick me up once it has stabilized. There might be a false trigger the first time around, but then it will stabilize. So I'm going to just plug it in and leave the room. There's the false trigger. Now this only happens with the PIR sensor, not the other two. So I'm going to walk back in the room slowly. If it sees me,
So I'm going to unplug it now. Now, this uh, speaker, it's a 0.5 watt speaker. It's, it's quiet. You can actually take the output and easily interface it with any kind of uh, audio amplifier, uh, even dollar store ones and larger speakers because 0 0.5 watt speakers they are uh, they're easy to ship they're not overly quiet but they're not fantastically loud but that's why this kit is, is kind of just a a fun uh, novelty item it's fun to put together it's a neat little thing especially for people who are just getting into it and uh, younger people uh, who who are just you know playing around so next let's uh, let's do a light sensor version, we'll do, uh, we'll trigger it with a change in light and we'll also trigger it with a laser. In the case of the light sensor module, I've actually got the light sensor module right here. This is a light uh, dependent resistor, LDR. You can calibrate the sensitivity via this blue onboard uh, variable resistor. The intruder alert is activated when you, when darkness hits the sensor. And so right now it's aiming up, it's aiming towards my lights. I'm going to plug it in and nothing's going to happen until I pass my hand over it or it becomes dark so what I can do here is I can have it so every time I turn out the light that happens just for fun I'll do that right now I'll just turn out the light and it says intruder alert eight times Um, and so now what I can do is, what I can do is I can point a laser at the LDR and I can turn out the lights. And so when that laser beam is breached, what do you think is going to happen? Let's give it a try. So, I made a stupid mistake. The reason why the, the, uh, the audio was so quiet and low pitched was because I was using an almost dead 9 volt battery. And it was, it, it's been around the block a few times. So now I'm using power supply, a good 9-volt battery. You wouldn't have that problem. It would sound like it's going to in a minute. I've got a 5-volt laser right here. Laser beams pointed at the LDR. I'm going to turn off the lights. <coughs> now you might not you'll see my hand break the laser because it's dark, but you'll, you'll see the uh, beam on the LDR stop. So let me just try it and see what happens. So, it works. You you uh, have your own 5 volt power supply, where it be a uh, 5 volt uh, wall adapter or a 9 volt battery uh, regulated down to 5 volts to the 7805 or 78L05 5 volt regulator. You can make your own laser with a 5 volt laser. You can use a laser pointer. Doesn't matter. You situate the laser beam, fix it on the uh, LDR. You break that laser beam. One more time. So it's an it's a neat little thing. Again, a novelty item, but it's kind of fun, and it's, it certainly is a neat science project. So last but not least, let's look at the slot sensor. As you can see, the slot sensor has two mounting holes. I power it up. I close the door. Door is closed. LED turns on. I open the door again. Door open. <coughs> or alternately, I drop something beneath the beam. So that's it. Uh, there will be three different versions, kit form, assembled form, uh, you name it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate, hesitate to ask. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry about the uh, battery issue. I'm sure I lost a lot, of, a lot of interest up until that point, so I'll have to add some captions. Take care and have a great day, everyone.